Third item on the agenda, House Bill 441, Representative Peterson. Welcome to our committee and brace yourself. <laughs> no, I've, I served on the, uh, well, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I served on the uh, interim uh, Judiciary Committee a couple years ago. So I am a little bit familiar with your methods. Um, <laughs> and I tell you, being here is kind of like putting on an old pair of shoes. So I hope that does not prejudice you against my uh, presentation. Good. We feel worn out. So. <laughs> well, the feeling is mutual. Um, so HB 441, uh, this, uh, this bill stems from a, uh, a, a situation that I witnessed uh, firsthand. Uh, my sister-in-law uh, has adopted uh, four children uh, from, from families uh, that uh, were in distress situations. Uh, a lot of the children have been affected by alcohol or drug abuse, and so they're working through those situations with the kids raising them. During a, a few years ago, she had fostered a, uh, a young girl uh, named Jasmine, and uh, DCFS was working with uh, Jasmine's mother to reunify and to, to help, help bring that family back together. Uh, my sister-in-law had, had become friendly with uh, Jasmine's mother and, uh, and would help Jasmine's mother uh, when, when she needed it, um, you know, if she needed to go to the grocery store or, or do something, she would watch uh, Jasmine and, and kind of help prop, prop up the situation as, as DCFS worked with, um, worked with the mother. So the mother uh, was able to correct her situation. She was able to, to get sober and uh, get employed. And DCFS uh, decided that at that time they were ready to reunify. So in, in a conversation just prior to the reunification, uh, the mother confided in my sister-in-law that, that uh, her plan was to move back to California, uh, where she had extent, uh, her immediate family was. And, uh, but she hoped that she did not get arrested uh, when she did that, because uh, she had outstanding warrants uh, for her arrest in that state. And so that's exactly what played out. Um, there was a reunification, and, uh, and Jasmine and the mother traveled to California. Within about three weeks of her presence in the state, uh, she was pulled over, and these warrants were discovered. And so uh, Jasmine went uh, into the uh, California Child Protective System at that point. And so it, it, it was really heartbreaking to watch because it was completely preventable. Um, uh, if, if the mother had decided not to travel to the state, that wouldn't have been a problem. But, um, but the child ended up in, in circulation in, in that system. Uh, and so uh, I was thinking through what could, what could we do as a state policy to prevent this kind of scenario from occurring that would increase the likelihood of success in reunifying children that are, that are in custody of the state. And I think the, one of the key elements is we do not want the parents becoming a custody of the state um, as, as part of that, that parenting experience. And for the welfare and, and benefit of the child, many times the, the, the act of separation is the traumatizing, uh, traumatizing event. And the, and the fewer times that that can occur, the better for the child and everyone involved. So what this bill does is it proposes that uh, DCFS, as part of their recommendation for reunification, conduct a warrant check on, uh, for felonies on the, uh, the parents of the child and to conduct that check on, on places where they've, they've lived in the past or where they have extended family. Uh, then that information would be presented to a judge who is overseeing uh, the the case to make, you know, he can determine based on the information and, and the background and all the history that's involved in that case to, uh, to move for reunification or to not, uh, depending on, on what he determines. And so that's what, uh, that's what this bill does. Very good. Does that complete your presentation? That does complete my presentation. We'll come to the committee for clarifying questions. Representative Green. Thank you. Uh, actually, I have a few questions. Uh, you have a, uh, a substitute on the system. Oh. 
Is yes, it? and I, I I do need that first substitute moved. Maybe we can do that when we uh, okay. we do action. I'm I'm speaking to the substitute. Okay, so that's that's good to know. Um, uh, I think that one's a little bit better and may uh, eliminate some of my concerns. So let me just skip to the to the last question that I had. How how does the um, division know where somebody has resided, or even more importantly, or more uh, problematic, where they have immediate family members. Yeah, that would be uh, probably an interview that the caseworker has with the individual and just uh, asking those questions and hoping for honest answers. And is there, and you, I don't know whether you know the answer to this, but is there some sort of a nationwide registry that you, where you can check for warrants nationwide, do we need to actually specify states where they've lived or states where they have immediate family members? It would be an identification of those states because each state has its own, like we have BCI here, so each state has their own uh, database. Um, I hear some chatting behind me. <laughs> We have some expertise. <laughs> if if out somebody there. wants to come and speak to that point, they're okay. certainly welcome All right. to do so. But we'll uh, see if somebody yeah, comes for it. When I when I spoke with um, uh, 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 when I spoke with Ledge Research and and trying to we were we talked to uh, uh, DPS DCFS and the courts. We were kind of trying to figure out who would do what, and we determined that it's feasible to do, but uh, um, but that we would each state would likely have to be contacted directly to get that information. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Representative Snow, clarifying questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, looking at the uh, first substitute, uh, lines 37 through 40, gives the court uh, some discretion whether or not uh, the court returns the child. Uh, I, uh, my question is, with the, with the state's... Um, objective to try as soon as possible to normalize the relationship between the parent and the child um, if, if there is if there is a warrant out uh, in a state some distance away and maybe it's an old warrant um, I'm, I'm just curious should that stand in the way of reunifying the child with the parent is well, that, that's a good question, and that's why I included this provision in there, because I don't know that, that you or I would be adequately prepared to answer that question, but I do believe the, the judge would be who's familiar with the specifics of, of the situation. Um, you know, some folks, you know, they may have an old, they, they may have changed their life, reformed, and they've got some things in the past that, they're, that they regret, um, but, uh, but they're, they may not be likely to go back to those places. Um, where on the other hand, you may have something completely opposite, where it's fairly recent and they travel quite a bit, they're transient, mm -hmm. and, and that might be a real, a real problem, a real risk. Do you know what the current policy is or practice? Uh, I'm assuming because we have this bill that, that um, DCFS is not doing this right now. That's correct. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you. I see no further clarifying questions. We'll go to the public. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to this bill? I see a hand. Please come forward. State your name and position for the record, and we'll hear your statement. Be brief if you can. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Dan Dill, representing the National Parents Organization of Utah. Um, I had uh, a concern about the uh, the bill, and, and uh, I understand that the court may be able to to exercise, a, hopefully, would be good judgment on this. But the concern is, is if you've got a, a, a situation where you've got a married couple, and one of them has uh, a felony on their record or something like that, and the state was moving toward uh, bringing the children back into the home, uh, the concern is, is the, the possibility or, or perhaps even the probability that the uh, the court or DCFS may may find this this warrant in another state from from one of the parties, uh, and then try to deny the, that re reunification process, despite the fact that the other parent may be uh, completely clean, uh, with a clean record without any um, uh, any concerns there. So that that would just be our our concern that they would, that we would raise on that and and uh, ask that the committee uh, consider that in its uh, deliberations. Very good, thank you. Any other statements from the public? 
seeing none, we'll we'll come back to the committee for action, which should include uh, a motion on the substitute bill. Right. Representative Green. Thank you. Um, can actually make two consecutive motions. The first would be to replace uh, uh, HB 441 with first substitute HB 441. Very good. The motion is to, to substitute House Bill 441 with first substitute House Bill 441. Uh, would you like to speak to that? No, I, I don't feel the need to. I think that's what the sponsor addressed, and so that's the one we're working from. And any discussion of that motion to substitute uh, from the sponsor? Any position on that? You're in favor no, of I'm in favor of you moving forward. The we'll first place time. that motion. All in favor of the motion to substitute, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The bill is substituted. And back to Representative Green. So I, I wanted to reserve the right to make a, a motion, but I, I wanted to further address uh, the question that, that I initially asked that, and see if the sponsor would be willing to, to work with me on an amendment here. Uh, it, it may not be few enough words to do in committee, but, but I wanted to get, throw it out there. On line 37, I, I like the fact that the court has discretion, but I would prefer that there be some additional guidance in there. In other words, if we started line 37, subsection 4, with language like, if the court determines that it is in the best interest of the child, the court may deny the return, yeah. as, as opposed to just being punitive because the judge is irritated that somebody hasn't taken care of their warrants. Right. Yeah, I would totally support that language. Okay. That's, that's in the spirit of what this is trying to accomplish. And, and uh, Greg, how many words do we have? Okay. So I think we could do that. So um, as far as that, the amendment, if it's a verbal amendment, we could do it 25 words or less. Otherwise, if it's more, I can prepare the amendment right now, have printed copies, and then the committee can vote on it. So I can do that okay. as quickly I, I as I think, can. And, yeah, we, we have yeah. fewer than 25 if we just said, if the court determines that it is in the best interest of the child, comma, and then take the capital T off from, and replace that with uh, lowercase t, and then just continue it the way it is. I forgot that they give you guys an allowance on words in this committee to use. Uh, but the, th there's a second part to this, which is potentially striking language. So let me continue. Uh, on line 39, ending the sentence at after the word state or any state, and that would be period. Because up in subsection 2, you talk about the, the requirement to do the warrant check in the state where somebody has l resided or where they have immediate family members. But let's assume the court becomes aware of a, an outstanding warrant in a state other than one of those two. Yeah. Um, so would it be appropriate to just uh, end that sentence after the word state with a period and, and not repeat that limiting language where the where the guardian or parent has resided or where they have immediate family members. Yeah, I mean, t to me, that it's, uh, it's semantics, basically. Well, cleaning. I don't think it really is, because if the court is aware of a warrant in, that doesn't come from a state where the parent has resided or where they have immediate family members, so it would be a different state altogether, right. um, do we want the court to, be, to have the ability to use its discretion there or be prohibited from taking, uh, using its discretion on returning the child just because the state isn't one where the, re where the person resided or where they have immediate family members. That's, that's a good point. I would, I would support that. Okay. So that would be the second part of the motion then is to, to put a period on line 39 after the word state and then strike the remainder of 39 and all of 40. Could you pass that over now? If we've got it. So we have a motion to amend. And uh, the motion, the amendment begins on line 37. And it says, if the court determines that it is in the best interest of the child, the court, comma, the court may deny and so forth. I'll, I'll read the rest of it. May deny the return of the child, et cetera, or temporary custody, et cetera, or guardian has an outstanding felony arrest warrant in any state, period. 
Uh, coming back to the sponsor, what's your position on the motion to amend? I, I'm comfortable with that motion. Is there any discussion in the committee on the motion to amend? Representative Cox, are you speaking to the motion to amend? Go ahead. Just, just one comment, because if you look at lines 34 and 35, it has the same language, but if I understand the proposed amendment, we're asking the court to specifically check those locations, but by making the amendment, if they find other locations, then uh, they can take that into account. If that's, if that's the, the motion, that makes sense to me. I just that, wanted that to point that out. That was the intent of, of the motion, to not limit the court, because it's the Child Protective Services that does the warrant check, as I understand. That's correct. Not the court. Then they file that report with the court. So if there's independent information that the court has, if it's in the interest of the child, we wouldn't want the court to be you know, handcuffed and not be able to, to make that determination just because the warrant wasn't from a state where the person resided or where they have immediate family. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate the amendment and the, and the bill. It, it uh, affects my district, so thanks. Any further discussion of the motion to amend? Uh, seeing none, you've said all you want to say, sponsor, yeah, and the maker of the motion is... And so we'll place the motion. All in favor of the motion to amend as described, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. The bill is amended. And now we're back to the committee for action on the amended bill. <coughs> Representative Cox. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to move out uh, first substitute HB 441 as amended with a favorable rec recommendation. The motion is to pass out favorably first substitute House Bill 441 as amended with a favorable recommendation. Would you like to speak to that motion? I just wanted to say thanks to the sponsor. Um, there have been some cases that have shown up in the media uh, and uh, show that this could provide some additional perfect protection against uh, some tragedies, and uh, I certainly uh, know of individuals in, in my district that uh, would have been impacted with this if it had existed before. So thank you. Any further discussion of the motion to pass the bill out favorably? Seeing none, back to the sponsor. Anything more you'd like to say? Uh, I just appreciate your time, and it's good to see you again. Thank you. Back to the maker of the motion. Anything further? Representative Cox? I'll wave. It's waived. We'll place the motion. The motion is to pass out favorably. First substitute House Bill 441 as amended. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? The bill passes out unanimously. Okay. Should, would, would you like to place this on the uh, consent calendar? Okay. That sounds reasonable. I don't see a motion, so I don't hear a motion. All right. well, I wasn't seeing a dismissal either, so I just kind of... Kind of, but uh, you're going to go first. Am I going to go first? It's fair for you to request it, and so that's fine. Okay. Your well, request did not fall on deaf ears. It was just rejected. <laughs> Point taken. Right. I'm out of here. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That moves us on then to. Um,